Matthew Hall uh, with Tanay Tanon. He is the CEO of Kamur. All right, so uh, Tanay, Kamur, you're, you're, you're the boss. You came from another company, which we'll mention it, Athelis or Atlas, depending on how you want to call it. But um, Tanur has now, backed by General Catalyst, Hemant uh, Nature, has put together a whole bunch of different pro- products. Right. So on what's now one back end. That's right. Designed to help primarily providers, inpatient and some outpatient, I understand. That's right. Give me a flavor of what are the different product sets that Kamur is doing. So I think Kamur's goal, first and foremost, is to build software and technology that makes the lives of providers easier. And we do that across the stack. We start in the front office with scheduling, intake, patient engagement modules. We have an ambient module that's probably one of the fastest growing in the country. It, on track to do 10 million appointments this year completely This was the old Augmetics and some other work you had internally? That's exactly. That was the Kamir Ambient and then the Augmetics products and then we replatformed them onto the Kamir backend and now we're scaling. Um, and then we have revenue cycle based tools so uh, agents and language models that essentially take every task that you might do in the back office for RCM and help automate or augment with a co-pilot for you. And the goal there is how do we increase collections for health systems when they need it the most and when they're the most behind on dollars. Um, and then all the way on the back end, we have AR, uh, you know, back office tooling, parts of the accounting stack. Um, and, and, and the thesis is, can we build a system of engagement that's almost a new center of gravity next to the EMR focused on provider work, workforce and workflow automation? All right. What do you think is the bit that is missing the most? Obviously, you have folks from HCA here in your booth. You have a bunch of other people you're, you're talking. What is the bit that is missing the most in American hospitals that needs to get fixed? Yeah. People have been doing, you know, RCM for years and trying to get three percent more of the rest of it. People have been trying to work on this ambient scribing. It's obviously growing fast. Where do you think the biggest sort of bang for the buck for someone like a Kimura is? I think what we there was this major technology transition with what happened with transformers and language models in the last two or three years. Sure. And on the backs of that, there are a whole set of capabilities that used to be things that needed a human to supervise or nurse the model along the way that now the model can essentially do very accurately on its own. And particularly task sequencing. So before, if you tried to have a, a language model do a bunch of tasks in the browser or resubmit a denial or you know come up with a prior author and appeal, it would probably fail, not on every task, but some subtask, and as a result, the entire thing would go to crap. With where language models are now, we believe that co-pilots and autopilots aren't a dream of the future, they're a reality today, and you know, we have the numbers to show it in terms of the ambient appointment volume, you know, the billions that we process autonomously on revenue cycle. So first and foremost, there is a technology breakthrough. Number two, I think the pains and needs of health systems are truer today than they were at any other point of time in, in the last 20, 30 years with potential cuts to Medicaid, Medicare, uh, with the fact that the labor market is in a place where you, you know, those sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year billers that you can hire in droves before you just can't anymore. And offshore markets are either insecure or also becoming expensive. And so you need to have a technology-driven solution. And so the time and the pain is there and the technology exists too. All right, you didn't mention sort of provider experience sort of from the, from the doctor and nurse perspective. No. I know you mentioned that you guys have got the, uh, the, strong, the strong line uh, nurse safety plus plus uh, right. app. You've obviously got, you mentioned Ambient AI bunches, which, you know, which people are selling, I mean, predominantly on improving provider experience. Um, how much more can we optimize, you know, the provider experience and efficiency? How much, how much is, is going to be working on that? The, the way I think about it, you know, our, our job's not done until a physician can walk into a room, have an encounter with a patient, voice off some commands to their AI assistant around labs and ordering, and then never click a button, never type a, a single word, and, and leave the room and have done a very productive, billable encounter. Uh, the day we start doing that, that's when you know everyone that's here at Hims and all these models are actually going to be, you know, having met their final purpose in terms of making a provider just focus on care. But that being said, we have some practices now, you know, in our ambulatory business, where uh, they will use our ambient tool, our autonomous revenue cycle, our prior auth and denials appeals automation, and quite literally never or maybe once or twice touch their keyboard. And I think we can make that a reality for every physician at HCA and every physician in the country. So two final groupings of questions, or exactly one question. First one is that everything you're talking about has been around and about in the hospital, yeah. but there is this thing called the EMR, which is the 
record, you know, the, the record, the ordering system, or the rest of it. Obviously, you have yep. just a few big players left there now. Minitex one, obviously in HCA, but obviously Epic's the big giant. At what point does either stuff come out of those that threatens what you're doing, or the, do you start impinging on where they're, what they're doing? Yeah, that's do a great question. Yeah, I, I think the like the way that I see it is the EMR at its core. And we have a very um, you know amazing partnership with Metatech. Uh, we're partners with Epic. Uh, we've you know deployed Ambien and other co-pilots at Epic, Metatech, and Cerner sites across the country in the ambulatory with Athena, ECW. So we work with them all. Um, I think it's going to be a blend of both. There are going to be some features that the EMR is going to build themselves, and they should build themselves. Uh, I, I, I think that parts of the ambient stack, like vanilla dictation and transcription, are things that should be more and more native within the EMR, whether that's done through a partner or homegrown by the EMR itself. Uh, number two, I think for, for, there are certain tasks, particularly you know, around automating big parts of the provider's work tax or the pains in their day, that maybe the EMR isn't the right center of gravity for because it's, you know, whatever you do, there's always going to be clicks, there's always going to be button pressing to navigate it. And it's just how it's built. It's, it's really a system of record meant for compliance. And that's where I think there's a massive opportunity for companies like ourselves and some of the other upstarts to come in and really augment that experience. You know, you, the way I think about it is you have Salesforce, which is this behemoth of a business in, in you know, automation and operations within companies. Um, but then you also have companies built on top, like Gong and Outreach and, you know, a whole host, like, uh, uh, there are entire software companies that are built with Salesforce as their back end. And they don't compete with each other, but they do they do supplement each other quite well. All right, the second group of the, the question, the second group of uh, the sort of, question is that you have built essentially a, uh, uh, and are still building, I see my, I, I would guess there's more to come. You know, all that big grouping, lots of different applications to have on one common back end. For, you know, there's a ton, if you go around the hall here, look at AI, even look at within the General Catalyst portfolio, there's a ton of other companies who look like they do some parts of that, yeah. right? What do you think the, uh, the sense you're getting between buying one company to do, do them all versus, you know, best of breed in the AI world is at the moment? Well, I, I think the beautiful thing is that when the healthcare market is so massive that like quite genuinely, you will have companies that overlap in features with each other and overlap in specialties with each other and still are independently going to be 10, 20, 50, $100 billion businesses. And so our belief is that you know, because one of how acquisitive Camir has been around replatforming and, and bringing a set of capabilities, we think there's a $100 billion software company to build here, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, really built and centered around the provider's experience and the back office experience. Now, does that mean that there aren't sub-verticals and sub-specialties of many other massive businesses? Uh, no, not necessarily. And, and, and I think we'll compete with them in some cases, we'll partner with them in other cases, but at the end of the day, it's just it, it, as long as the end goal is solved, and you, you know what Himan always says is, is to solve this $4 trillion market, you need an ecosystem of companies, not one behemoth that's, that's you know, the elephant in the room. You really do need an ecosystem. All right, well, let's close with Hamon. He bought a health system, and then there's all kinds of weird announcements from General Catalyst about it becoming a fund and going public and God as well. Yeah. Talk to me about what your role is within the sort of ecosystem of General Catalyst companies and what's going on in Ohio, and are you going to be involved? Yeah, first, I, you know, working with Hamon and General Catalyst is. is I mean, it's such an honor and such a pleasure because such, truly an ambitious firm and an ambitious man. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, I, I think the uh, we've learned so much. Camir was incubated as part of General Catalyst. And so many of our core strategies, they're literally like these are General Catalyst strategies playing out over multiple years now. Uh, and I think you know, our role is first and foremost, we're a portfolio company. We're here to uh, serve health systems. Um, but we have a role in GC as well as we're part of health assurance. We're going to be deeply involved in the work at SUMA. Uh, we're going to be involved in the work with many of the other partners and health systems that General Catalyst works with. And you know, we have a team of forward deployed engineers that with really a, a Swiss army knife in terms of the types of tools and, and, and pieces of software we have, so we can go on site and customize something for SUMA or for a Wellsman or a Cincy or wherever. And, and I think what I'm most excited about is blending that custom engineering work with great products um, and general catalyst distribution and ecosystem. All right, well, uh, hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea about what uh, Kimura is up to. Mr. Tanon, he is the CEO. Thanks for your time. Thank you.